This is the Collector Car Podcast, the home for the auto enthusiast. Join Greg Stanley as he applies over 25 years of insights and analytical experience to the collector car market. He will interview the experts and throw in some fun stuff as well. Do you find it challenging working on your collector car? Advantage Lifts has the solution for you with their selection of two and four post lifts. Advantage's two post lifts provide an unparalleled amount of versatility. Each wheel can spin freely and be worked on individually, and you'll have full access to those hard-to-reach parts of the undercarriage. And best of all, Advantage's two post lifts are ready to ship now. Get $100 off by using code TCCP for the Collector Car Podcast. Again, that's TCCP. You can find your perfect Advantage lift by calling 763-300-5730. That's 763-300-5730. And don't forget to use the promotional coupon code T. CCP. Hey, it's Greg Stanley. If you're listening to this podcast, you know I love everything automotive. This passion has expanded to include being a car specialist consultant for RM Sotheby's. So if you need assistance buying or consigning a collector car at any one of our online or live auctions, including Scottsdale, Amelia Island, or Monterey, you can reach one of our car specialists at rmsotheby's.com or you can email me directly at gstanley at rmsotheby's.com. Hey, welcome to the Collector Car Podcast. I appreciate you joining me this week for uh, a talk about really cool cars. And this week, it's all about the Gene Ponder Collection. It's a collection that RM Sotheby's is auctioning off September the 22nd through the 24th. The actual auction occurs in Texas, but you can bid from anywhere around the world. Just go to their website, rmsotheby's.com. This is mostly just an overview of some of the cool cars and automobilia that I have found. I find it fascinating, this collection. Uh, if you're joining me via audio only, you can check out the video at the Collector Car Podcast on YouTube. I am making weekly podcast videos, so you can not only hear my voice, but you can see the cool stuff I am talking about. So I just pulled up a picture that shows uh, the collection in Texas, part of it anyways. And all of these cars, I want to say it's 127 cars, they all go for are going no reserve, and as well as the automobilia. So... If you want something really cool and neat, uh, this is a great auction for you. So I am going to cover some automobilia. I don't think I've ever done that. Just broad strokes of some of the cool stuff I found and some of the price points, as well as a lot of the cool cars that I found in this auction. There's a lot of, like I said, recreation cars, um, really cool cars from the 50s, a lot of MGs, which is very interesting. So some good British cars, some Americana cars. All sorts of really great stuff. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing I want to dive into a little bit is the diversity of automobilia. So the first thing I'm pulling up, I just thought was so cool. This is a display piece from like your local dealership, and it's displaying a Roberk Fender Mirror sales display. That is what it's called. And picture a blue display, and you can flip the switch to see what the fender mirror looks like and how it works. So dash controlled fender mirror. I just thought this thing was cool. The estimate on this one is 800 to $1,000. Very, very cool. It's one of those things that I've never seen it before, which is why I'm mentioning it. Be a great piece for your garage. All right, the next one are tether cars. Now the estimate, they're showing three cars here, uh, red, maroon, and off-white. These tether cars are eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars. Uh, just really cool. Looks like they're kind of the the, the race cars, indie race cars from the nineteen thirties. All right. Next, we got a Bugatti stained glass emblem sign, uh, eighteen hundred to twelve hundred dollars. Just a really cool thing that would light up any garage uh, where there might be a Bugatti. Uh, let's see. There are some bicycles. So uh, this one's pretty cool. A Schwinn Mark IV Jaguar bicycle. Uh, looks to be in gorgeous shape. Uh, I don't know the relationship if it's just anything to do with the Jaguar cars or if it's just the name model of the bike. Uh, yeah, so offered without reserve. It does have a green color. It is not British racing green, but uh, it's a cool green color. Now the estimate on this one, twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars. So that's a pretty rare bike. All right, the next is a really cool Snap On Gold Medal Limited Edition Toolbox. So this is an actual toolbox. I didn't know they made limited edition toolboxes, but apparently they do. The estimate on this one's $2,500 to $3,000. So if you remember our Elkhart sale from a couple years ago, Arm Sotheby's Elkhart sale, there was a lot of garage equipment, lifts, uh, anything from chairs to sofas, everything. And it all went kind of nuts. Now, I don't think that will happen at this one because that was during the pandemic. People were dying to get out. They had built up all this 
cash reserve from, I don't know, not traveling or whatever. And Elkhart came around and it just kind of went nuts. So I don't think we'll see those crazy results at this sale, but there is some really stellar uh, equipment uh, stuff for your garage available as well. Now this next one I would love to have uh, in my office here. It's a Cobra and Ikuri Ecose transporter. So this is the Cobra transporter, the big bus that you could put, bus looking, it's a die cast model that you could put, uh, that was, you know, the full size real one was in the 60s, Allen Man Racing, and there would be a couple Cobras or GT40s or Daytona Cobra on it. And uh, this is a nice die cast model. There's also a little AC Cobra XP98 uh, that comes with it. Estimates 800 to $1,200 on this one. And then we have another cool bicycle, a Schwinn Black Phantom bicycle. This one was a higher dollar. Again, $2,500 to $3,000. I just thought it was cool. All right. I think we're, oh, we're kind of moving into cars. The next one is a Ferrari race car twin size bed. Super cool. I would have loved to have this as a little kid. Uh, $1,200, $1,500. It looks like brand new. It's super cool. Scudiera Ferrari uh, comforter, I guess is the best way to put it. Black wheels, racing car in your bedroom. I think that's super cool. All right. And then there's a really cool collection of magazines, road and track collection, mostly library bound with shelving units, $1,500 to $2,000. I don't know if this is all of them or if this is, it looks like it's decades worth of them. That would be a really cool resource to have available, especially as a podcaster. That would be really cool. <laughs> All right. The next one is uh, model airplanes. This is a USAAF Lockheed P-38 Lightning model airplane. It's pretty robust and significant, apparently. The estimate is $2,500 to $3,000 on that one. And then we're getting more towards the big boy tours here. There's quite a few uh, motorcycles available. Now, I picked this one out because I have a picture... If I could grab it right now, I would, but it's not within arm's reach of my grandfather on like a 1937 Indian in 1937, which is pretty cool. This one is a 1930 Indian Scout 101, estimates 50 to 75 grand. And this is a beautiful red uh, with some gold leaf on it. And it has the saddlebags with the cool fringe on it. So very, very cool. And now we're moving into the cool cars. So we're going to start off with, with a recreation and it's a recreation of one of the biggest, baddest cars ever. 1939 Alfa Romeo 6C. It's not the 8C, but it's the 6C. 2300 Corto Spider recreation in the style of touring. So this one is, let's see, 30, uh, 325,000 to 375. Uh, it's really cool. I'm going to flip through some of, some of the pictures here. It's black and red, black on the top, red on the bottom half. Absolutely stunning, sexy, beautiful car. At the time that this thing was built, oh, it's got a Jaguar uh, straight six engine in it. At the time that this was built, it must have looked like a spaceship going down the street. So, and it's got, looks like a uh, tan ostrich hide interior. Uh, it's got the aluminum turn dash. Uh, absolutely stunning, beautiful recreation. So I'm not gonna, uh, it's just beautiful. So if you get a chance, check it out online. Uh, my words cannot do it justice. Absolutely beautiful, uh, beautiful car. All right, next is a really cool little Porsche, 1975 Porsche 911S Targa. So the Targas, you know, that's where you take the uh, the portion of the roof off and stow it and then uh, enjoy uh, enjoy your ride with your uh, your hair blowing through the, the wind there. So beautiful red. It's got the Carrera stripe on the side. Um, red and black interior estimates 50 to 70 grand. All right, next was another recreation. This is a 1954 Jaguar C-Type recreation, 190 to 250. Uh, this one's cool because it, it's not painted. It's in the brushed aluminum finish, so you can see all the incredible bodywork. Let's see, whereas a hand-formed all-aluminum body polished to accentuate the care and skill taken in its construction. Stunning recreation of the iconic Jaguar C-Type race car, champion at the 24-hour Le Mans in 1951 and 1953. And it benefits from a recent polish. So that's good to know. You got the side exhaust on the drive. Actually, no, let me take that back. This is a British car, so I, I'm not quite sure where the steering wheel is in these pictures. But side exhaust, Jaguar, straight six, uh, wood rim steering wheel. All right, just an absolutely stunning, beautiful example. All right, what do we got next? We've got another recreation. This is probably my favorite recreation in the collection. 1938 Alfa Romeo 
hundred B Milli Milia spider recreation, three fifty to four hundred grand. So this is uh, all red. It's definitely red, red interior, red wheels, uh, stunningly beautiful. Let's see what it says here. Let's see, methodically constructed full scale recreation of the hallowed Alfa Romeo 8C 2900B, which finished first and second at the 1938 Milli Miglia. Powered by a custom made 3.9 liter straight eight cylinder engine, created by fusing two Alfa Romeo Alfetta inline four cylinders, four cylinder engines. All right, we'll have to take a picture, look at the picture of that. Rides on correct 19 inch wire wheels, featured in the 1995 issue of Classic Sports Car Magazine. All right, I'm gonna flip through the pictures here. I mean, it's just stunning. It has kind of these uh, boat tail fenders in the back that come, uh, actually all the fenders come to a point. Very sweeping, beautiful looking car. And there's the uh, straight eight engine. Uh, just uh, a work of art there. Very, very cool. I'd love to hear this one fire up and see it go down the street. All right, what do we have next here? All right, this is a big time recreation. This is a recreation of the 1936 Bugatti Type 57G tank. Uh, so 160 to 200 grand. I always thought this was an ugly Bugatti, but it's so historic. The only one ever made that I know of is at the Simeon Museum outside of Philadelphia. All right, let's see. Inspired by the legendary Bugatti 57G tank, winner of the 1936 French Grand Prix, in 1937, 24 hours of Le Mans. Now this has a Jaguar six cylinder engine with C-type heads on dual SU carbs, four speed manual transmission. Uh, so very, very cool. I mean, they do take the original one uh, out at the Simeon Museum in the back parking lot, but this is one you could just have a ton of fun with and drive it to your local cruise and that would be really cool to see that. All right, next is a cool Ferrari Dino. This is a chairs and flares edition. So this has the Daytona seats. This is red with black interior, estimates 400 to 500 grand. Red with black interior, and it's got the uh, little flared fenders. Now, if you listen to my podcast, as far as my Monterey recap, you'll know that in the audience, I was bid spotting for this guy that really wanted the chairs and flares we had at Monterey. And he wanted it just because he had one when he was growing up, uh, like 30 years ago, and he kind of wants to relive that. And he was, he went all the way up to over 700 grand for one of these, and it was immaculate shape. It was in better shape than the one here in this collection, but this one is a really, really nice one. Uh, you can really see the flares in the picture I'm showing right now. So I really hope, he said he would go after it. I hope he's in Texas uh, bidding on this live and that he does get this car, because he went hard for it out there in Monterey. I'll have to follow up with him to see if he does indeed get this one uh, from the Gene Ponder collection. All right, next, we've got a 1936 Grand Prix recreation. Again, another recreation, but of an iconic car. This one's 300 to 375. Let's see, equipped with a rebuilt Delahaye truck engine, uh, clothed in purpose-built lightweight aluminum co coachwork. Now, I'm not sure if this is the same model or not, but if you go to my Laguna Seca video from Monterey Car Week, there was a uh, Delahaye Blue. It looked a lot like this one that actually won Le Mans. So that might be the one that this one is based on. Uh, very cool car. All right, we're moving into the MG world here. We've got a 1935 MG PB Airline Coupe by Car Bodies, uh, $130,000 to $175,000. This is a red, looks like possibly black interior edition. A rare and remarkable MG PB built to the streamlined design of H.W. Allingham, one of four, of only 14 airline coupes believed to have been built, which few survive. So a uh, pretty cool little car. I don't think I would fit in it being six feet tall, uh, but very, very cool looking tiny little car. Um, just a picture a little, little tiny uh, British coupe, very cool. All right, next we're moving into the 1962 Shelby Cobra. Now this is not a real one. <clears throat> it is a recreation, but it is one that was done uh, by the Shelby crew and it does have a CSX number. Uh, the estimate on this one's 200 to 250. Now this is the spec that I would really love to have. I love the big block 427 cars, but if I had all the money in the world, this is what I would probably get. Not one, this is black with red interior. I would maybe do silver with red or light blue or something. But this has a uh, 289 engine, 
that's been punched out a little bit and uh it's got it's it's the early model so it doesn't have the big flare fenders doesn't have the side pipes it doesn't have the hood scoop it's much more reserved um, and classy in my in my mind it's got the cool chrome wire wheels i wouldn't want to have to clean those but uh this one's really cool so this one estimate is 200 to 250. this is i believe the 8000 series of the csx yep this is 8971 so they only made a handful of these okay only 50 built to celebrate the Cobra's 50th anniversary. And this is the 22nd one. It doesn't say whether or not it is aluminum or fiberglass. So you would have to make the assumption it is a fiberglass bodied car. If it was an aluminum bodied car, it would probably be another hundred grand uh, on the price. Uh, so this is a beautiful little car, uh, one that I would love to have in my garage. All right, now we're moving on to another Bugatti. This is a Bugatti Type 35B recreation by Persang. So Persang, I think they're Argentinian. Uh, this estimates 250 to 300 grand. This is a great way to get a $3 million Bugatti that you can actually drive and enjoy and just have a ton of fun with. This one is dark blue with a tan interior. They make them just like they did back in the day. They're so faithfully recreated. Uh, it's, it's just amazing what they've done. Um, I do know someone that's got one of these on order. And I can't wait to see it. I hope to go for a drive in it or for a ride in it. And you have to like the person you're with because you're almost on top of each other in these little uh, Bugattis. I mean, it is a tight fit for sure. Uh, just really, really cool. Like I said, estimate is 250 to 300, which is basically what they cost new. Uh, yeah, so really, it does have some modern amenities, modernized with electric radiator fan and electric starter. So there's no, I have no problem with that. Make it reliable, why not? All right. Now we're going to move on to a few more here. Let's see. The next one is, actually, let me flip over here. Is, all right, there we go. 1957 Jaguar RS2000 Special. So again, another kind of recreation. Uh, 150 to 175, red on red car with uh, chrome wire wheels. Very beautiful. Let me read about this one here. We're stunning aluminum coachwork and the style of the Ernst Luf designed Veritas RS2000. Built upon an XK150 chassis, powered by a 3.4 liter straight, six cylinder SE engine and Moss four speed manual transmission. So this is where you can have that Jaguar, I don't want to say Jaguar reliability, uh, seriously, uh, but you can have that XK150 uh, maintenance uh, in something that truly looks exotic and is out there and nobody else uh, will have one. And it's an aluminum bodied car, it's high quality build. Uh, just a really cool, beautiful little racer. That would be a lot of fun. All right. We've got about 10 more cars here. Take that one. All right. This is a cool one. Pretty rare. 1953 Alvis Healy 3 liter sport convertible by Panelcraft, 175 to 190. Just one of 28 Healy sport convertibles produced, of which only 25 were, were equipped with Alvis engines and transmission. Uh, let's see. Attractively, attractive aluminum coach work. Uh, uses Healy G-type chassis underpinnings, and it's got the little Alvis inline six-cylinder engine, which is 106 horsepower. So dark green over biscuit leather, le leather with green piping. Now, if you hear, uh, looks like a British racing green and biscuit, you know, biscuit is a great way to say tan. So cool little rare car, beautiful little car, uh, one that is uh, would be worth checking out. All right, next is a 1959 MG MGA Twin Cam Special, 75 to $100,000. I picked this one because these little twin cams, they seem to be going up, then they're down. I just want to kind of keep my eye on to see what this one is going to sell for. 75 to 100 is right on the money. From an estimate perspective, typically they would sell right there on the high side at $100,000. So one of 2,111 MGA Twin Cams produced, 180 horsepower inline four cylinder engine. Uh, so pretty cool. There's a lot of little differences with these twin cams from the basic uh, MG. Uh, this one is like a dark blue with red interior. Uh, great little engine bay. Um, beautiful, beautiful interior with the wood steering wheel. So that's one to watch. I just want to see what is it doing in the marketplace, honestly. That's what I'm really wanting to see. All right, next one is something I've never seen before. It's a 1969 BMC 
J4 flatbed haul, flatbed car hauler, 35 to 50 grand. Uh, it's just a little tiny car hauler, hauler uh, British right-hand drive, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm assuming, I mean, it, I'm assuming it can hold at least one car. It looks like almost like a little micro hauler, uh, but it's super cute. Um, you know, fairly inexpensive. If you have like a little mini or an MG or something like that, this would be a really great uh, way to show up at the local car show. A rare surviving British Motor Corporation J4 flatbed truck outfitted as a car hauler, forward cab configuration, inline four, yeah, that four cylinder. So you gotta have a small car if you're gonna put it on here and bring it to the local cruise in. Very cool. All right, this next one I thought was beautiful. It's a 1958 Alfa Romeo 1900 Special and let's see estimates 325 to 400 grand it's a little two-door uh sexy looking sports car with again chrome wire wheels and red with black interior i must say he mr ponder must have had quite the thing for uh red british or italian cars a little alfa romeo engine twin bucket seats a beautiful little car let's learn a little bit more about it here believed to be the first of approximately eight vehicles produced by i will not get this right auto Technica del Laredo, Laro, stunning bespoke lightweight aluminum coach work, equipped with Alfa, Alfa Romeo celebrated uh, 1,975 cc twin spark plug engine with Weber carburetors, displayed at the 2016 Quail. So uh, it's got disc brakes, electric fuel pump, fuel pump for safety and reliability. Beautiful little Alfa. That would be a lot of fun. Again, this one I don't know if I'll fit in. All right, a few more here. We've got another MG, a 1938 MG TA Tickford drophead coupe, 100 to $140,000. Uh, one of just 260 TA Tickford, Tickford drophead coupes built. It's a cool little car. I would need the drophead part. I could fit in it then. So, very cool. All right, got a few more here. This is a really cool 1939 BMW. 327 Sport Cabriolet, 250 to $300,000. One of BMW's most celebrated pre-war automobiles. Badge to replicate the rare post-war EMW 327. Powered by a Bristol-built overhead valve M328 engine. Appealing black and red livery over a tan interior. Also known as Biscuit. So, very cool, beautiful car. Iconic when it comes to BMWs. Um, very nice example, it seems, in stunning colors. Definitely cool. All right, we're going to go to some of the higher dollar cars here to end. Uh, I did not cover the 300 SL convertible because I, I think it was a convertible because I've talked about those enough. Uh, this is an interesting one. 1952 Ferrari 212 Barchetta, 525 to 625. It is a dark red with dark red interior, uh, chrome wire wheels. Um, Barchetta, if you ever listen to the band Rush, they do, say, I think it's Tom Sawyer, they sing and they mention the Barchetta. Um, this is what they were talking about, a car like this, little little Ferrari. All right, let's read about this. Late production Ferrari 212 Intercoupe, modified with handcrafted aluminum bodywork in the style of the Superleggero Millimilia Barchetta by Turing, finished in Rosa Corsa over pumpkin leather. Documented with copies of service invoice, blah, blah, blah. All right, very, very nice example. Let me go look at the interior here. I want to see the pumpkin leather. You would think that would be a bright orange or maybe a dark orange. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it kind of looks like a dark, dark brown. Very cool, striking interior. All right, all right, next we've got a 1960 Maserati 3500 GT, 800 to $1 million. One of approximately 250 examples built, refinished in striking red over black with knockoff wire wheels. I see a theme here. You got the 3.5 liter twin plug inline six cylinder engine with triple Weber carburetors and a four speed manual transmission. I'm not an expert on these, but if I remember correctly, a lot of these had the fuel injection and it was easier to switch it out with the Webers. So it looks like, I, I could be wrong on that. Don't, don't, don't take that to the grave. But this is a beautiful example. Uh, again, another red car with uh, chrome wire wheels. I see a trend here. Absolutely stunning car. All right, I just see four more here. 
All right, 1958-250, Testarossa recreation. This one is interesting. It's beautiful. The proportions aren't quite spot on for the Testarossa, but uh, the average onlooker would never be able to tell. Now, this is interesting. Let's see what it's based on. A beautiful recreation of one of the most famous, race car, famous racing cars of all time, based on a modified 1982 Ferrari 400i chassis, powered by a, by a Dino V6 engine paired with a 5-speed manual transmission. Handmade aluminum bodywork with signature pontoon fenders. So this is interesting because you've got the Dino engine. Yes, it's in the front and not in the back as it would have been in a Dino. So that's a great power plant for a car such as this. So this is, again, one that would be a lot of fun uh, just to hear it fire up. So beautiful, neat little car. All right, next, we've got a 19, another Bugatti, 1932 Bugatti Type 55 Super Sport Roadster. Uh, another recreation, this one by Persang again. So they're the ones to go to. This is four fifty dollars to $500,000. Uh, let's see, a, a fascinating recreation of the famous Baron Rothschild Type 55, powered by, powered by a supercharged 3.2 liter, no, excuse me, 2.3 liter straight eight-cylinder engine and a four-speed manual transmission. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's red, black, black interior. Uh, neat little car. You know, I would almost maybe rather have this one over the Type 35. You know what? I just have to drive both of them and figure out. <laughs> do I want the little small racer or do I want the slightly larger Type 55? Very cool. All right, we're going to move out of the car world for a second uh, and go to a boat, a 1955 Chris Craft Cobra 18. 150 to 175. Uh, this one is a really cool um, speedboat. It's got a cool tail on the end. Let's see. Chris Craft's stunning sports car for the water, one of only 108 Cobras built, of which 52 were 18 foot hulls. Unforgettable styling, classic wood craftsmanship with a bold fiberglass fin. Let's see. All right. 131 horsepower, triple carbureted Chris Craft Hercules KBL inline six cylinder engine and uh so the pictures it's kind of it's got the wood as the main part but it's got uh, gold highlights and then it has the gold fiberglass trim uh really cool car or really cool car really cool uh boat uh that would be a, a cool thing to have especially if you have a 1955 car in which to pull it or a truck all right the last one i'm going to talk about here is the 1938 Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantique Recreation. So this is recreating a $10 million car, and you can buy this one for $1.4 to $1.8 million. So that tells you it's based on a real Bugatti. Let's see, what is it? What do we have to say about it? A fascinating, hand-built, and remarkably intricate recreation of the universally acclaimed Bugatti Atlantique. Atlantic. I said that wrong earlier. Originally a Type 57 chassis with Gan gang loft saloon body until 1986 and then it was transformed to this between 1991 and 1996. all right very very cool let's flip through some of the pictures here i would almost say it looks like it's probably a super dark blue and not a black but uh very cool oh, yeah it's got the blue um alligator hides on the inside that's interesting iconic teardrop styling Beautiful car. I don't know if this is the most expensive car in the collection. Actually, you know what? The, the uh, Mercedes 300 SL, I think, was. But, uh, again, a ton of really cool stuff. Um, just absolutely incredible collection of which you can have a part of it. So, uh, thanks for listening this week. Please share this with your friends and family. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm trying to build that out. Fun videos coming every day, just about uh, these little fun one minute videos. I'll try to keep those up for another couple months. And then a new video of some of the car stuff I'm doing, the car shows. I was just at the Dayton Concord Elegance today as I'm recording this, uh, which is why if you're watching online, I look a little sunburnt <laughs> and windblown. Uh, I'll have that video up in a couple weeks. And uh, as always, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following. And I'll talk to all of you next week. Thanks for listening to the Collector Car Podcast. Don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes and be sure to follow us on Instagram and everywhere else at the Collector Car Podcast.